Hello, welcome to Stories in Time. My name is Eloise Schottler. As I thought about the story I was going to tell you this morning, a couple of things went through my mind. I have been actually concentrating since June the 1st on writing memoir. You know, that just get into your life and bring back things that happen to you that you want to have happen. And it's not been easy. It's been difficult, even though for 20-some years I've been telling stories, as I do here, that are sometimes small elements of memoir, something that happened that I want to remember. And so I began to work on that. Who do I want to work on it for? Primarily for my family. That uh, I want to put down some things, put others aside, and have an assembly or an assemblage of things that I can tell or leave for my children and my grandchildren it's as a legacy. Have you ever thought about that for yourself? Even if you're young, you want to put down some memories of what you're going through now or what you think is important or what you remember about some of the people who are in your life, in your family, who are gone now. What do you remember about them? So that's where my head has been. It's not all that easy, as a matter of fact. So I thought I'd start by telling you a little of the things that have helped me and that may help you, or I would hope that you would listen to some of my stories and think, oh, she thinks she's so smart, but I've got stories that are better than that. And get them down on a piece of paper or record them. Have you ever looked at your iPhone, if you have one, and there's a, a voice memos on there? or settings to record, and you just talk it in and keep it. I found that I'm very glad that I have kept that. All right, so I went to the beach last week, Virginia Beach. I had never been there before. And when I got there, my daughter and I went, and we didn't stay there. We stayed in, in Williamsburg but we went down to the beach to see the ocean, to walk around, to walk down the strand, you know, to see. And I was so reminded of the beach as I had been to it when I was younger, a child, actually. And in March, I had told some stories up in Cape May, New Jersey, even more reminding of going to the beach in North Carolina when I was a young child. And it made me think about it. Actually, I sat down in a rocking chair on a big porch uh, on the hotel where we were staying across from the Atlantic, and I started making notes. What did I remember? How was it? What did it look like? One of the memories that sticks out for me, my grandparents had a house uh, at Riceville Beach, North Carolina. That's off was Wilmington on the land, and then you cross us to a sound, and that's where their house was, and then you cross over a bridge, and you're on Wrightsville Beach. And Granny and Dad Jack had a nice, tall, white house at the end of Harbor Island. It was the last one on that street or road, however you want to think about it. And that's where I was going to the beach. I first went there when I was about five years old. I went down with my grandmother. I loved it there. I loved it because I could lay down in the living room on the couch and there would be windows on the side and windows on the front and I could just lay there and look and there was water all around me. Beautiful. And the strangest thing to me happened. One morning, I was sleeping on a chaise lounge in front of the big windows in the living room. And I woke up, it must have been 
4.30 or 5 o'clock. It was very early. And I sat up to look out to see what time it was, to think of where I was, why had I waked up like that. And I looked out the window, and the sun was coming up on the sound right in front of our house. And I looked at it, and as the sun came up, smaller and bigger and then brighter, and it looked like diamonds all on the top of that water. It was shining. There were diamonds, diamonds on the water. I never forgot the way that that looked that morning. I liked that. It was magic. It was like in my books. There was a magic look to that water. And that's what I'm hoping to catch again, the feeling for finding something that I've encountered as I was growing up or even as I'm old, you know, that touched me so, that I remember it so. And to me, that's part of memoir. You remember. You remember. Other people sit down and what they think about is they remember the most delicious food they ever met, they ever tasted. Sitting down at a meal with their family for Christmas or Thanksgiving or whenever they were celebrating with food, maybe a Friday night at their house. And you got to get the taste in your mouth in order to write about it or to remember it well enough to write about it. I do that with a macaroni salad that my mother made when I was young. It wasn't her recipe. She actually stole it from the S&W cafeteria in Charlotte. She didn't steal it exactly, but she was working downtown, and she went there every day for lunch for a year to try to get the recipe, to figure it out, to make it up, to be hers so that she could make macaroni, macaroni salad as delicious as that on Trade Street at the S&W. There was one ingredient that she couldn't get for a long time. She told me that. I was lost without this one ingredient. I know it would never taste as well as they did if I didn't do better than that. And I tasted it every day and then all of a sudden, of course, of course, the garlic. I wasn't putting garlic in it, Eloise. And I wasn't as careful in making that salad, because what you needed to do was to take the big bowl, rub butter, butter on the bowl around the inside edge, cut a piece of garlic, and then take the open end and just rub it. Don't put it down in there. Just rub it around into the butter that's on the bowl. That was enough. That was the perfect enough. Actually, I didn't say anything to her, but I thought that the magic in that salad was uh, green olives with pimento stuffed in the inside, a little onion, and those olives. I still make that salad. My family likes it. My, I have people that ask me to bring it to a uh, potluck you know, but only half of them will eat it. I don't care. I eat what they don't eat. And it's, it's really a wonderful thing to have something that you taste and you care about and you write about it and leave it for your children. Leave it so they'll know how you did that kind of a beautiful thing. Um, so that's what I'm doing with memoir and put it in, into story, remembering the details that I can, how the room looked, 
how the room smelled, how the kitchen smelled. I watched my grandmother make cakes, not out of a box, just out of a bowl. And I don't do that myself. I have made cakes, but they came out of a box. But I remember watching her and seeing how cakes used to be made, used to be made. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll get a clue from this, or maybe you'll just get an idea that you would like to leave a special story for your family, for your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, the way things are going. Take care. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.